Good morning, everyone. It's a good thing we have to forgive more than just seven times, otherwise I'd be past my quota with Father Matthias. All the times I've made fun of him in homilies. We're going to speak today about forgiveness, because that's what the readings are talking about so directly. But just as a little heads up, the homily is going to be kind of short today, because this is also our Missions Appeal weekend. Ordinarily, we would have a speaker come and present to us at the parish a way that we can support one of the missions throughout the world, but because of COVID, things are all different now, so we're just going to listen to an audio recording later on. But first, let's talk about this gospel. We're told about this servant who owes his master, the king, a huge amount Now, what it says there literally in the Greek is that he owes his master 20 or 10,000 talents. I should have written down all these numbers. I'm getting them all mixed up. It was 10,000 talents, I believe. Now, one talent is equivalent to 6,000 denarii, and one denarius is equivalent to a day's labor. So if you do the math, it basically comes out to, in our modern currency, about $7 billion dollars. So it's this huge amount. It's impossible to pay that back, at least for most of us. Maybe some people here could, but I certainly could not pay that back on my priest's salary. That is meant to represent what we owe back to God. We could never pay back or earn redemption for ourselves. It is impossible. And as this parable says, the master since the servant had no way of paying it back, ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. So even if we were to give absolutely everything we have, all that is most precious to us, still that would not be enough. And so this servant begs his master for mercy, and the master forgives him the debt. Doesn't even make him pay it back, just forgives it. That is what God has done for us. None of us could win redemption for ourselves. We simply come to God and beg for mercy. And God, because he is so good, paid that price with the blood of Jesus, his son. So now let's go to this next encounter. We're told that this servant goes to one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount, it says. And in the original Greek, it says he owed him just a hundred denarii. So about the equivalent of a hundred days labor. So if you do the math, it's probably about $10,000 or so. So still a substantial amount, but something much more, you you could pay that back eventually if if you really had to. But in this case, the servant is not merciful to his fellow servant. But he seizes him and strangles him and demands him to pay back what he owes and sends him off to prison. And that is meant to be an image of us. We are all servants of God. We're all fellow servants. We're all in this together. We're in the same boat. And God is inviting us to be merciful to one another. Part of the the difficulty of our human condition is the sin that we all live in. And so we inevitably do things to one another that are hurtful. And the closer you are to someone, the more they they tend to hurt you, is how it seems to play out. And so the more there needs to be forgiveness in that relationship. Jesus is inviting us to be merciful to one another because we are all in need of God's mercy. We all fail one another in different ways. Now there is a direct connection between our willingness to forgive And how often we come to the sacrament of confession. You see, when we come to confession in a regular way, in in, in an habitual way, it reminds us over and over again that I too am a sinner. I too am in need of God's mercy. And when we're aware of that, it's easier to be merciful to others who have sinned against me. But if we don't ever go to confession, or if it's been years or decades, 
What can begin to happen is we'll fall into this false sense of self-righteousness and think that I'm, I'm really a good person. I don't, you know, I don't go around killing anybody, and I haven't done anything too horrible lately. And you can fall into that in such a way that when other people hurt you, you become blinded to your own ways that you hurt others, and so you're less willing to forgive others. And you might think, well, you know, it's not that big a deal, Father. Why go on about this? Well... Let's listen to how this parable ends. The master summons this servant who didn't forgive his fellow servant and says, You wicked servant! I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. So God is saying to us that if we do not forgive one another, if we cling to resentment, we could go to hell for that. Or at the very least, you could end up in purgatory for some purification. And it's not because God likes casting anybody into hell, right? That's never the way this should be understood. It's because we will not want to be in heaven. Heaven is a place where forgiveness reigns, where mercy is triumphant. And if we are unwilling to be merciful, we're going to choose to place ourselves outside of heaven. Now, we have some very specific statistics about confession in our parish now because of the DMI survey we all did earlier in the year. We had over 1,000 parishioners participate, which is the highest of any parish in the diocese. And those are all the the most faithful people that were here on Sundays when we did it. And out of all of those who were surveyed, 25% said they never go to confession. So these are our most faithful parishioners, people like you here at Mass, just on a regular Sunday in in September. Let's not miss this great gift that is given to us in confession. Because if we don't ever go to confession, then we're not even coming to the Master and asking for forgiveness. That servant had to come to the Master and beg for mercy, but if we don't go to confession, we're not even doing that. And on top of this, by not coming to confession, we're more likely to become hardened of heart and unwilling to forgive. And in doing so, condemn ourselves to eternal separation from God. So let's not do that. Let's be merciful as God our Father is merciful to us. Amen? So now we're going to transition into our missions appeal. And as you listen to this, just I invite you to, to be willing to contribute whatever you're able to. Remember, it's not just about our parish here, our diocese here, but we're part of a universal church throughout the world. And there are places in the world that are struggling immensely, far more than us here. So let's just give our attention now to this mission's appeal. I'm John Drake. My wife, Judy. I'm John Drake. My wife, Judy, and I are members of Queens Parish in Jackson, Michigan. I'm also the founder of the Lingap Children's Foundation, which runs an orphanage for abused, neglected, exploited, or abandoned children located in Toledo City, Cebu. I'm John Drake. My wife, Judy, and I are members of Queens Parish in Jackson, Michigan. I'm also the founder of the Lingap Children's Foundation, which runs an orphanage for abused, neglected, exploited, or abandoned children located in Toledo City, Cebu in the Philippines. The Lingap Center is home to 100 of some of the least fortunate children in the world. Prior to building the Lingap Center, the children lived in an unbelievably filthy converted pig slaughterhouse. They were not able to attend school because they just didn't have the money to do so. And worse yet, they were not even welcome in the church since they didn't want them begging during church services. They could watch from the outside. Thanks to your help, however, all of that has now changed. Since 2006, over 600 children have received some level of support from the Lingup Children's Foundation, and 32 former street children have graduated from college, and we only have one master's degree so far. 
They're all very active in church, and in 2016, our choir was part of the official choir that performed at the International Eucharistic Congress that was held in Cebu City. Sadly, it was the first year that the Pope could not attend, but think of it this way. The outcasts in the community are now the ambassadors of goodwill to the world. This was only possible thanks to the help of people like you. There are children alive today only because of the help that you have provided us in the past. I've been honored to be a Cooperative Mission Appeal speaker in the Diocese of Lansing for approximately 10 years. The Mission Appeal Program is simply a wonderful initiative that supports between 25 and 30 international missions. Each year between the months of May and September, appeal speakers such as myself are invited into the various parishes throughout the diocese to share their stories. This is about how they share the gospel with the poorest of the poor around the world. The funds collected from these appeals are used for many, many different things, including the support of clergy, the education of seminarians, they support women who don't have the ability to work, the disabled, and programs for orphans, such as my own Lingop Center. Some mission speakers also request funds for catechist training and for assistance in the building of schools or chapels. By having speakers from around the world, the various churches are able to connect with the, with the broader worldwide church and to our baptismal call. Sadly, this year, to the, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, all mission visits had to be canceled. It's been a very, very difficult year for people, not only here in the U.S., but around the world. In many countries, the conditions are far worse than they are here in the U.S. In the Philippines, for example, where the Lingap Center is located, some families have resorted to serving their children what they call rock soup. This is simply boiled water in which they put rocks and they tell the children that the soup that it makes will help to fill their stomachs. People are literally starving to death in many places. Priests, seminarians, women's religious, and lay ministers have come to rely on our prayers and our financial help. During this crisis, COVID has added yet another almost impossible layer on top of their already difficult lives. They all need our help and our prayers, now more so than ever before. All funds collected this year will be combined and distributed equally among the core group of missions that have been established within the diocese. I'd like to share with you one example of the difference that your help can make. It happened to me last year at the Lingap Center. Every year we hold what we call the Lingap Honor Society in Homecoming. It's intended to be a celebration of academic success for the kids, and many of our former wards come home for the event. Well, last year, one of the boys, Vincent, came up to me with tears in his eyes, and he hugged me really big. And then he backed off and he shook his head, and then he hugged me again. And he did it a third time, and he did it actually four different times. And finally, I said, okay, Vincent, that's okay. I've got it. But with tears streaming down his cheeks, he looked me in the eye and he said, but Tito John, don't you realize that without you, we're all nothing? Well, that hit me like a rock. And then I realized that he was actually talking to all of you because without your support, we could do nothing. The children would not have a chance. To these children, gratitude is not just a word, it's everything. So on behalf of the entire Cooperative Mission Appeal Program, I would like to thank you all in advance for your support. Together, we're able to change the lives of countless people around the world for the better. And remember, without all of you, we're nothing. Thank you very much.